Good day, everyone. It's a joy to see you. And for those who are joining us online, may the Lord bless us all today. Meron hong gustong sabihin si Lord ngayon sa ating mga buhay. And I, I would like to encourage you to really open your heart. Alam niyo po, ang theme natin ngayon is called to serve. And you read that at the front page of our newsletter. But I'd like to encourage you, hindi po ito negative idea. For many of us, giving is something we don't like. Giving time giving effort to others. It's something we would rather conserve everything for ourselves. But I tell you, hindi ho yan ang tamang attitude. The, the Word of God says, the Bible says, Jesus Himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Mas masaya ho ang magbigay ng oras, lakas, panahon, tulong sa iba kaysa sa tumanggap ng tulong. And that is the words and the wisdom of Jesus. So ngayon pa, makinig tayo ng isang message that I believe God will use to touch our lives. Many years ago, Pastor Leia and I, we, have, we were serving uh, the Lord while we were involved building our career, in my case, in accountancy and audit, in the case of Pastor Leia, uh, in uh, dentistry and teaching us at Double Medical School Foundation. Uh, but we were serving and we enjoyed it so much, we ended up becoming pastors. But uh, you don't have to be like us, but we can all serve the Lord together because really it is more blessed to serve than to be served. Jesus said, if you want to be the greatest, be the servant of all. And I believe you want to be the great, greatest, and not for selfish gain, of course, but because we want to honor God. So ngayon po, merong magandang mensahe si Lord. Buksan po natin ating mga puso because God will sure, surely speak to us today. Ating speaker, isa po sa ating primary team of leaders dito po sa Lighthouse. He is, uh, he is uh, an educator by profession. He has taught in many uh, uh, universities, including the Ateneo, the Davao University. Uh, he, he really loves God and he really loves people. So today, it's my joy to introduce him to us. As he comes and to preach the Word of God, let's us all stand to honor the proclamation of the Word of God. Tayo po tayo lahat. Let's clap our hands to the Lord as Philip Garlito shares the Word of God. Amen. So come on, let's continue to clap our hands to Jesus. Lord, we clap our hands to you, O God. We honor you. We love you, God. Speak your word to us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let us all be seated. Amen. So happy day, everyone. You know, I have been given this privilege and I am humbled to be given this privilege to share God's message to all of us today. I would like to thank the Lord and of course our pastors, Pastor Luther and Pastor Leah, for this opportunity to preach the word today. Amen. Let's get straight to the word. The title of the word is called to serve. Everyone say called to serve. Amen. Inay katapad, God has a word for you today. Amen. Now, let me begin by citing a research. No? According to the facts, this research published in the National Library of Medicine has the objective to test central assumptions from the self-centeredness, selflessness, happiness model. So there's a model that compares self-centeredness and selflessness. So the objective of this study was to test whether the assumptions about self-centeredness and sel selflessness are true. Conducted among 547 heterogeneous samples of citizens. Take note, it's a large sample. So it's really a valid study. Factor analysis revealed that self-centeredness was positively and significantly related to fluctuating happiness, meaning pabago-bago. While selflessness was positively and significantly related to authentic, durable happiness, meaning stable kind of happiness. Furthermore, afflictive affects or emotions such as anger, fear, jealousy, and frustration are associated with self-centeredness. While emotional stability and feelings of harmony are associated with selflessness. So those are the results of the study. And, you know, the results show that people who are self-centered are more likely to experience fluctuating happiness hindi stable, pabago-bago. No? And the emotions such as anger, fear, jealousy are associated with their being selfish. But people who are selfless, 
people who are selfless are more likely to have emotional stability and authentic, durable happiness. Sinong gusto ng authentic, durable happiness and emotional stability? Amen? So what can we learn from the study? And you know what? It's just one of the many studies that prove the same point. And this was published in a peer-reviewed journal. So it's really valid. It's really reliable. What can we learn from this study? When we serve others more than we serve ourselves, we become happy, we become fulfilled, and we become blessed. Amen? When we serve the interests of others more than we serve our own interests, in return, we are blessed. Amen? Now, there's a Chinese proverb and it says, If you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. Amen? Help somebody. You know, other things can make us happy and they are all good. But if we want long-lasting happiness, if we want authentic, durable happiness, let's live a life in service to others. Amen? And the Bible also makes the same point. You know the verse on the newsletter? It says, Matthew 16, 25, For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You know, I really find that a very beautiful irony. For as long as you hold on to your life, you will lose it. But as you give your life away for God's sake, you shall find it. You know what? Life is not found when we pursue it. Life is found when we pursue the giver of life. Amen? And what is the will of the giver of life? If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. Amen? Come on, let's give God a clap of praise. Now let's define calling and serving. Calling is a strong inner impulse toward a particular course of action, especially when accompanied by conviction of divine influence. So that means to say, calling comes from God. Serving, to serve is an act to fulfill a purpose, role, or function. Now, there's a synonym for calling, and that is vocation. Everyone say vocation. Hindi po vacation, ha? vocation. And you know, the word vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, which means to call. And Baylor University, it's a private Christian university in the U.S., has this to say about calling. The primary vocational identity of believers is therefore not their profession, not their role within a family, or even any ministerial position they may fail. Rather, the primary vocational identity of believers is as those whom God has called to a life of faith in service to Jesus Christ as Lord. Brothers and sisters, our primary calling is to live a life in service to God and others. We don't need to be in that profession. We don't need to be in that position just so we can serve the Lord. Serving is what God has made us to do. Serving is what our lives are designed for. Amen? Amen. That is why when we serve, in return, we are happy. Kasi yun ang true design natin. Amen? And when we talk about serving, you know, Jesus is the best example. Matthew 20, 28, it says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus has set a great example. Pwede namang hindi siya bumaba sa lupa kasi comfortable na siya sa langit. But he obeyed God. He gave up his comfort to obey the will of the Father. John 6, 38, it says, He came down from heaven not to do his will, 
but, but to do the will of God. Amen? Amen? So let's reflect on the life of Jesus. He is the best example. Now let's follow His example and that is the way that we can live a life that we can say we are satisfied, we are happy, and we are blessed. Amen? Amen. Now, what do we need to know about serving? Serving is not one directional. And I like this verse in Proverbs 11, 25. It says, The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. You know, in my journey, many times, may pagod talaga. No? Like, you become physically exhausted when you serve kasi busy ka rin and all. But you know what? Deep inside of you, you are satisfied, you are fulfilled, na refresh ka rin as you refresh others. Amen? As you see them, mapasalamaton ka ayo, as you see them happy and blessed, you are also blessed. Amen? Amen. Next is serving is an expression of love. Sino nagmamahal dito? Lahat tayo, amen? Di ba, we love the people we serve. Uh, we, we, we serve the people we love, Amen? We serve the people we love. It's an expression of love. Sabi sa Galatians 5.13, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another. You know what? It's possible that we can serve without loving. For example, we are paid to do it. So we do it kasi may payment or may compensation or trabaho natin yun. But, we can never love without serving. We cannot say we love God and we don't serve Him. Amen? We cannot say, I love you, Lord, and we don't follow His will. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go to the hindrances to our calling to serve the Lord. Let's talk about these hindrances. Unang-una, self. Everyone say self. Sabi sa Matthew 16, 24, Then Jesus said to His disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, yung selfishness natin, self-centeredness natin, it's really a hindrance to fulfill our calling from the Lord. It's really a hindrance. That's why Jesus' words are, Deny yourself and take up your cross. Every day is a self Denial. Amen? Every day we do self-denial. Now, what do we need to deny? Unang-una, sin. Kasalanan. No one may be able to serve God if God is only looking for those without sin. Lahat naman tayo may kasalanan. Pero it's also clear in the Bible na God has given us the grace to overcome sin. And that means to say, before sin happens, we can, we can deny it. Prevention is better than cure. Amen? Kasi the tendency is, when we sin, we develop that feeling na hindi na tayo fit mag-serve kay Lord. No? Makokonsume tayo ng guilt natin. And tendency is, we draw away from the Lord. Kasi feeling natin, hindi na tayo fit mag-serve kay Lord. So before it happens, deny it. Inim ka tapat, deny it. And that leads me to the next point, feeling of unworthiness. Let's deny the feeling of unworthiness. You know what? We will always find reasons not to serve the Lord as we focus on ourselves. Kasi makikita at makikita natin ang ating limitations, weaknesses, shortcomings natin, no, mga imperfections natin, makikita at makikita natin yun lahat. But, when we focus on God and not on ourselves, you know what? Let's begin to see ourselves the way God sees us so we can serve the Lord, we can respond to Him. Amen? God does not call the qualified, but He qualifies the one He has called. Amen? Amen. In mga katapad, you are called. Next, selfish will. Our dreams, aspirations, and goals, if not aligned to the will of God, will serve only our own interests. Hindi naman po mali, mangarap. But, as we dream, as we make a goal for ourselves, let's surrender it to God so we will know if our will is aligned to the will of God. Ano ba ang words ni Jesus when He was about to be crucified? Not my will, but your will be done. 
Sana ganun po ang prayer natin. When we have a dream, when we have a goal, sana yung prayer natin, Lord, ito yung will ko. Ito yung gusto ko sa buhay ko, Lord. Pero Lord, I surrender this to you. Not my will, but your will be done. Amen? Now, may sinabi si John Bevere, it's not in the PowerPoint, sabi niya, don't ever serve your dream more than you serve God. Don't ever serve the dream more than you serve God. Kasi ang mangyayari niyan is the dream becomes your God. Amen? So, let us surrender whatever yung mga desires natin sa buhay kay Lord. Kasi yung will naman ni Lord, yun ang best para sa atin. Amen? Amen. And last, that we need to deny is comfort. Among many things, no? These four. Last is comfort. We all want comfort. And it's not bad. Amen? It's not bad to desire comfort. That's why nag-aaral tayo ng mabuti. We work hard. Kasi we also want comfort. Pero we have this saying kasi na too much is bad. And our excessive regard for comfort may blind us to see the needs of others. Kasi enjoy na enjoy ka na sa comfort mo na hindi mo na nakikita ang pangangailangan ng iba. Marami nang nangangailangan kay Lord. Pero enjoy na enjoy ka na sa comfort. That's why you don't recognize the needs of others. Let us seek to pursue a purpose-driven life, not a comfortable life. Amen? Amen. So those are the things we need to deny. And sabi pa ni John Bevere, no one can move you outside the will of God but you. Kasi ikaw at ikaw din ang magde-decide if you follow the will of God or not. So let us uh, deny those things. Number two, the past. Philippians 3, 13 to 14, it says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So ano ang, ano ang point ng verses na ito? Move on. Tell the person next to you, move on. Move on from the past. Don't allow your past mistakes, your past failures, your past shortcomings, even your past heartaches to hold you back from moving forward. Amen? There are far greater things ahead of you than behind you. Kaya ang tawag, tawag sa past is past. Kasi nakaraan. Amen? It needs to be, uh, you, you don't need to stay in the past kailangan mo na yung kalimutan, mag-move on ka na. Of course, we learn from our past mistakes, but it doesn't mean we have to stay there. Just because your past was so miserable, just because your past was so broken, does not mean that your present and future have to be. For as long as you have surrendered your life to the Lord, binago ka na ni Lord. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. Amen? So move on. Let's move on from our past. Now, there's a story in the Bible uh, that's the story of the wife of Lot when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Let me read Genesis 19, 25-26. By the time Lot reached Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus, he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the veg vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. You know what? Before that happened, the angels told them, don't look back, run away, don't look back. But the wife of Lot looked back. That's why she became a pillar of salt. And maybe, God is telling you today, don't look back. Don't stay in your past. Move on so you can move forward. Amen? Come on, let's give God a clap of praise. Number three, the world. Now, Romans 12, 2, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, we live in a world that puts so much emphasis on excessive self-importance, 
selfish gains and comfortable life. Look at social media. I'm not saying na mali mag social media. I also do social media. But there are many things that can distract us. No, on social media, there are many things on social media that can distract us from pursuing the will of God. Kasi, uh, chances are, when we uh, spend so much time on social media, we develop that feeling of jealousy and envy because we get to see the things that are enjoyed by the people that wala sa atin. And the next thing you know, you have already desired those things for yourselves. And the tendency is, yung mga bagay that truly matter, must set aside kasi nakikas- nakikisabay ka na sa mundo. Pag may opportunity mag-serve, hindi ka na makaserve kasi occupied na masyado ang schedule mo, ang time mo, busy ka na masyado, marami ka ng involvements. Hindi naman po mali pa minsan-minsan. But if it reaches the point na decline ka na lang ng decline kasi marami kang involvements, you know, hindi na tama yun. You have to reset your priorities. Amen? Di ba kung busog na busog ka, kahit gano'ng kasarap yung pagkain in front of you, kahit favorite mo pa yan, ayaw mo na yung kainin kasi busog ka na. And as we serve the Lord, God, you know, will kanang make us, will, will, will fill us with happiness and joy. Busog na busog na tayo sa joy, sa fulfillment. Bakit pa natin nahanapin yun sa ibang bagay, sa ibang lugar? Amen? Amen. So, let us seek to uh, serve the Lord and make our lives pleasing to Him. Amen. And then number four, difficult times. Sabi sa 1 Peter 4, 12 to 13, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. You know, I intended to include this point Kasi based on observation and drawing inspiration from the people in the Bible, difficult times can make or break us. And our response is very crucial. Hindi naman po ibig sabihin na when God allows difficult times, pahihirapan tayo ni Lord to respond to our calling. Hindi naman po ganun. My purpose po ang pagsubok sa buhay. It develops in us perseverance, strong character. Yun ang sabi sa James 1, 2-4, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Kung may pinagdadaanan ka, it doesn't mean to say na, pabayaan mo yun kasi mag-serve ka lang kay Lord. Example, merong may sakit sa family, pabayaan mo na yan kasi mag-serve ka lang kay Lord. That is not the point. The point is, don't give up. Kasi no season lasts forever. So bakit ka magde-decide ng patapos? You don't even have to choose between your trial and serving the Lord. Amen? Di ba ang kanta ganina? The battle belongs to God. Serve ka lang. God will take care of you. You know, I have a disciple. Meron silang pinagdadaanan sa family yung father niya may prostate cancer. So he was in tears when he was sharing about that sa life group namin. But there was one time na blessed talaga ako. Nag-send siya ng picture. Nag-evangelize siya sa coastal road on his own. And ngayon, life group leader na siya. Naka-open siya ng life group during the season na may pinagdadaanan sila sa family. Pwede pala yun. Amen? Amen. Now, let's transition to how to respond to our calling to serve the Lord. Unang-una, focus on God, not on yourself. Inaim katapad, focus on God. There's one good example of a person na nag-focus kay Lord instead of sa kanyang sarili, and that is Apostle Paul. We know Apostle Paul, dati, Saul siya, di ba? Siya ang nag persecute sa mga Christian, sa mga followers ni Lord. On his way to Damascus, na-encounter niya si Lord. And then three days, he was without sight. Then Ananias came to him and laid hands on him, and then he regained his sight. You know what happened after he regained his sight? Acts 9, 19-20 Now for several days he was with the disciples who were at Damascus and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue saying, He is the Son of God. Everyone say, immediately. Wala nag-ingun si Apostle Paul, Lord, six months at Lord B, one year sa Lord, kay I need to find myself. I need to fix my life. Kay grabe ako dati, opposite ka ayo. Wala. Immediately he proclaimed Jesus to other people. He didn't mind unsay ingnon sa tao sa iyaha. Amen? 
he focused on God and not on himself. So focus ka kay Lord, not on yourself. Amen? Number two, be discipled. Acts 2.42, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. You know, the ministry of Jesus continued even after his resurrection when he was not physically present anymore with the disciples. Bakit nag-spread out yung ministry? Because the people Jesus discipled also discipled other believers. Amen? You know what? There's something beautiful about discipleship kasi sa discipleship, tinuturuan tayo, mini-mentor tayo ng ating discipler, our discipler journeys with us so we can serve the Lord more effectively. And more importantly, nabibuild yung character natin kasi character is more important than the skill. Pwedeng magaling ka, talented ka, pero hindi tama ang character. So kailangan matono yung character. Amen? Amen. So pa-disciple tayo. Number three, Pursue your purpose. Ephesians 2.10, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Kung gusto mo, happy ka, fulfilled ka, pursue mo ang will ni Lord. You know what? There may be costs when we serve the Lord. Yung time natin, yung time ng pag-rest natin, medyo makukunan. Nope, uh, may pagod din. May exhaustion din physically. Pero yung exhaustion physically, Pwede lang yung mawala, itulog mo lang yan. Amen? Pero pag ang heart at soul mo ang pagod, mahirap yan. Amen? That's why when you pursue your purpose, kahit pagod ka, happy ka. Happy yung heart mo. Fulfilled ka and you will do it over and over and over again. Amen? Amen. So let's pursue our purpose. Sabi pa ni Tim Tebow, your life does not start when you get into that school. Find the person you will share your lifetime with or get that job or start that business. Don't wait for purpose to find you someday. Find meaning and make your life count in the present. You have purpose today and right now. Brothers and sisters, tomorrow is never promised. We don't know what will happen next day. So serve now. Don't delay. Inam katapat, don't delay. Number four, be involved. The Bible speaks of each of us having been gifted by the Lord for the common good. Sabi sa 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 7, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us. Hindi po sinabing to some of us, but to each of us so we can help each other. So what does it mean? May binigay ang Diyos sa atin na magagamit natin to serve Him. You cannot say, wala mang kuy maambag, wala kuy makontribute, wala mang kuy talent, di mangit ko hawda na mga yung ana, may maaambag ka. Amen? You just have to be willing and you know what? God will multiply no matter how little you have. God will multiply it. develop yung mga pwede mong gawin as you serve the Lord. Amen. The number five, make it a lifestyle. Sabi sa John 21, 25, and this refers to Jesus. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, which if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that would be written. Grabe no? The world would not be enough to contain all the books na masusulat to account for all that Jesus did. So what does it prove? Jesus lived a lifestyle of serving. Naging lifestyle yun ni Lord. And if it becomes our lifestyle, lifestyle to serve, hindi na po mahirap gawin. Amen? Di ba nagtututbrush tayo, naliligo tayo? Di ba it's not hard to do those things? Kasi part na sa ating daily routine, lifestyle na natin. Amen? So let's make serving God a lifestyle. Amen? Amen? Now let's proceed to the ways you can serve the Lord. And this is the last part. Unang-una, volunteer. Everyone say volunteer. Pag may mga call for volunteer, sign up ka. Amen? Sa life group nyo, volunteer ka. Ate, kuya, pwede ako mag ng prayer? Pwede ako mag ng soaking? Or you can also volunteer to host a life group. Kung hindi mo pa kaya mag lead ng life group, then you can host a life group sa bahay nyo, sa opisina nyo, then invite people. Amen? Then your leader will 
lead the life group, volunteer in the different ministries in the church, magaling kang mag-edit, marunong kang mag-edit ng video, volunteer, kailangan, kailangan natin yan ngayon because we have online ministries, amen? So talk to your life group leader, ate, kuya, gusto kong mag-serve, no? Patulong ka, amen? Because God will multi multiply what you will offer to Him, amen? Number two, give. Everyone say give. So for God's Kingdom. You know, God's kingdom is a fertile ground. You are blessed to bless others. Provide financial support. No, kung may mga sewing opportunity, bigay ka. You know, my purpose, why give bless ka ni Lord? So you can also bless others. Sabi pa sa Bible, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. May, my purpose, bakit ka give bless ni Lord? Amen? Example, next month, we will have each one change one campaign. Power, di ba? So example, yung brother mo sa life group, may na-invite siya. Ten. Tapos out of ten, may six na ang problema nila, wala silang pamasahe. Then you can contribute. Amen? Yung blessing mo, i-share mo yun sa iba. Because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? Amen. Number three, and at this point, may I ask the worship team to come up here? Share. Everyone say share. Share your testimony to others. You know, when you ride a taxi, when you are waiting for your turn, na may transaction ka, serve. No, share your testimony to others. You don't need this stage as your platform to share. Saan ka man nilagay ni Lord, that's your platform to share. For our online worshipers, you might be able to come here sa Lighthouse Victoria kasi malayo ka outside the country, but you can serve the Lord by sharing your testimony, sharing Jesus to the people around you. Amen? Amen. And you don't need to be always in the church building to serve. San ka nilagay ni Lord sa community mo, sa paaralan mo, you can share Jesus to the people around you. And number, uh, before we go to number four, sa online din. Share natin ang ating audio and video resources. You just don't know kung sino ang makabasa yan, makaview niyan. No, i-my day mo, i-share mo, i-send mo sa messenger. That's how you can serve the Lord. And number four, lead people to Christ. Sharing is the one thing. But to lead people back to Christ is another kasi i-consolidate mo. mag -e effort ka to follow up. Next month, we will have our Each One Change One campaign. I-desire mo sa heart mo, Lord, help me, Lord, na may malid ako at least one person back to you. Amen? So that that person, sana naman ang magsiserve, no? At may mababago na buhay dahil sa Kanya. Amen? It's very fulfilling talagang masaya po mag-serve kay Lord. And in conclusion, the Bible tells us very clearly that in Philippians 2.4, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. 1 Corinthians 10.24 You know, curious siguro ka. Curious ka ba? Why are people dissatisfied, depressed nowadays? It's because they have just focused on themselves. You know, get this. If Joseph had focused on himself, he could have taken revenge against his brothers and let his family die in famine. If Moses, if nag-focus siya sa sarili niya, he could not have brought the Israelites out of Egypt and slavery. If Apostle Paul had focused on himself, he could not have preach the good news to the Gentiles and spread God's word to more places. And if, if, if Jesus had focused on Himself, we could not have received salvation and been redeemed from eternal condemnation. There's more to life than just living it for yourself. God is calling you and me. Serve. Gusto mo masaya ka? Serve. Gusto mo may mangyari sa buhay mo? Serve. Gusto mo na pagdating ng panahon, at the end of it all, you can truly say, I have lived my life fully and no regrets. Serve the Lord. If we haven't started serving the Lord, now is the time. Respond to God's call. You know, that's the greatest adventure. That's the best life you could ever live, serving the Lord. If you have been serving the Lord faithfully, keep going. Continue ka. Be steadfast. 
be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And if nag-serve ka na dati, and for some reasons, nawala, na-stop ka, balik ka lang, patulong ka. Patulong ka sa life group leader mo. You know, God is even more excited to see you serve Him again. Amen? You don't need to find happiness. Just serve the Lord. Kasi ang byproduct ng ating pag-serve kay Lord is we become happy, fulfilled, and satisfied. Serve the Lord. Say yes to Him. Say yes to your calling. Because the joy of living is not found when we pursue it, but when we pursue Him. Amen? Amen. Come on, let us all stand and let's clap our hands to Jesus. This time we will pray and I want everyone to close your eyes. And if possible, let's raise our hands to God in humility. Come on, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because you are a great, merciful, and loving God. Jesus, thank you that ikaw ang naging best example of serving. And Lord, help us, Lord, to reflect on your life. Lord, help us, Lord God, Lord, to say yes to you, to say yes to our calling, oh God, to serve. Lord, your word says that you have come so that we may have life and have it to the full. Lord, may each of us respond to our calling, the calling to live for you and your people instead of for ourselves. Come on this time, why don't you open your mouth? If you can identify yourself with those hindrances, is surrender mo yun kay Lord. God is listening to you right now. Come on, surrender it to God. Lord, I surrender to you myself, oh God. Lord, I surrender to you, oh God. Lord, my dreams, my aspirations, my goals. Lord, I surrender to you, oh God. Even the world, I've been so drawn to it, oh God. Lord, I surrender to you. Lord God, even my difficult season, oh God. Lord, I want to respond to you, oh God. I want to respond to you. I want to focus on you and not on myself. Come on, tell the Lord, Lord, gusto ko mag-focus on you, God. I want to see myself the way you see me, oh God. Lord, help me pursue my calling. Lord, help me, Lord God, to be discipled. Lord, help me, Lord God, Lord, to Lord God, be involved and make it a lifestyle to serve. Come on, tell the Lord, Lord, help me, oh God. Na Lord, starting ngayon, Lord, starting today, I will serve you, oh God. I will keep serving you, oh God, until, Lord God, Lord, until the last day of my life here on earth. Lord, help me, Lord, to serve you, God, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's keep praying. Right now, as we pray, can you tell the Lord, Lord, what is one specific step I will do? So again, I don't stay on the level of intention or desire. I want to move to the level of action. So one thing that you want to do, one thing that you will do this week, kung kaya this week, do it so that you can actually serve. So maybe matagal ka nang invite to, to be part of something. Then maybe this week, text the one who's inviting and say yes. And then get into the action. Wag lang ho pag intention o gustong gawin. Magandang mga plano pero walang nangyari. Let's add action to our intention and there will be a reality that will become a part of our experience. So right now, let's pray. Our Father, Lord, we say yes to you, Lord God. And Lord, with your help, Lord, we will do these things. Come on, tell the Lord, we will say yes to the one who's been inviting us. We will say yes, Lord God, to what you have been impressing upon us. We will say yes, Lord God, and we will act. Action time na ngayon, action time. Good intentions alone are not good enough. Action is necessary. So Lord God, help us today in the name of Jesus. Come on, tell the Lord, God, I will do it, Lord. I will do it. I will serve you, God. God will take care of you, but give your heart, give your life, give time. Do something. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Let's all serve the Lord. It's a good thing. And we will be blessed as we do that. And of course, God will be glorified. And that's our number one desire and purpose. So God, we thank you, Lord.